If negative reviews don't bother you, what does bother you? Just having a, a difficulty getting another film off the ground, that, that bothers me a whole lot more. Uh, seeing a land, the landscape shrink in terms of distribution opportunities, in terms of you know, places that are interested in playing or screening independent movies, you know? I mean, what bothers me, like Netflix bothers me, you know, they bother me because they put the independent, they put video stores out of business, they put a lot of independents out of business, and they're just doing their own stuff. And I think they had that plan all along. I'm not a fan, I'm never gonna subscribe to them and I'm never gonna be a fan of them. That bothers me. That bothers me a lot more than a bad review. Because the movie, like my movie Camp Blood, which was the first movie of mine to be released, like commercially released, third movie I directed, but first to be released, Fangoria hated it, gave it a terrible review, but it was very, very popular, not only here, but also in England, to the point where we did a sequel the next year. That's how popular it was. Um, we did the third one a few years later. That franchise is still going. There's people who contact me all the time about those movies and how much they enjoyed them and loved them and want me to sign them and this and that and the other. And they've become part of like the, especially the independent horror landscape. Well, what that goes to show you is don't take those reviews that seriously because you never know. One critic doesn't like it, maybe somebody else does. And if people are interested in the movie and they like it and they, it, it strikes a chord with the, with the fans, that matters way more to me than any reviewer. Um, because I'm a fan and I want my movies to deliver for the fans too, you know? I wanna, you know, I wanna make a movie like the one I'd like to see. So yeah, reviews don't bother me. I mean, and, and I, I think you can get very, like what, was, what did I see one person, there was a quote this other director said, I only, uh, the only reviews I care about are the good ones. You know, because it's true, you know, you can, you can do that too. You, it's almost like you, maybe you shouldn't look at any of them then, you know, but you know, we're still going to look at our, our press because we're interested, you know, it's all, you know, whenever you have a new movie out. But like the last film we did, not this one that just came out, but the last one we did, High Eight, we did it completely on a wing and a prayer and we didn't care what anybody thought of it. I couldn't care less because the thing was so low budget and independent that Nobody, I mean, I told everybody to make the movies. I said, don't worry about it. Just make something you want to make and don't worry about it. anyone likes or doesn't like. And you know what? People love that movie. It was embraced the way you, you can't, you couldn't buy the publicity. We were getting like page length articles and magazines that I could never get them to do anything before. And they were doing it on their own volition because they loved the movie. And the festivals that took it and the fans and everything, that's why we made a sequel. Because this film was so embraced, but we did it without caring. You have to do that sometimes. You have to not care what people think or what you think people are gonna like or not like or what your last reviews for your last movie were. You, you really can't care about that. If you do, then you're just gonna stop. You're just gonna get frozen and just stop. And that goes back to the Facebook group where you guys yeah. just all said you wanted to yeah. do fun stuff. Yeah, exactly. Like one of the filmmakers, I remember a direct quote from him was, remember when this used to be fun, quote. And he was, he was, basically a guy my age, because some of the filmmakers are older than me. Some, some of the filmmakers involved with High 8, I grew up watching their movies. Oh, wow. Like, cool. like I was renting their stuff from the video store when I was in my teens or late teens. Um, they're, you know, like they're my heroes. And, uh, but, the, but the guy who said that, yeah, he, he, was, he, he really struck a chord. Remember when this used to be fun? Because we all remember when it used to be fun, when we were out shooting with our friends in the backyard with the high eight camera or whatever camera we had, and we weren't worried about Netflix or Amazon or Blockbuster or what store used to have our movie but they closed or who's gonna take our film, who's not gonna take our film, or what demographics say or what magazine. We weren't thinking about any of that stuff back then. We were just, we we're just making films. So you need to go back to that. We, we went back to that and, and I think it, it, and everyone got it. The fans, they were like, this is, this is like, feels like one of these old movies and you know, it's, it's got that free spirit, that creative spirit. So, you know, it, it just goes to show you that you never know. You just have to kind of follow, we really followed our instincts with that one, you know? So yeah, it could be risky or it could go nowhere, but we didn't care because we are like, well, we're not risking enough to worry about that. You know, you, you know, we 